Good morning and welcome to this beautiful place surrounded by the Alps on this side and on this side it's just a narrow valley going south and we are in Liechtenstein one of the real small countries here in Europe so instead of walking through a city today I'm walking a whole country this is gonna be a first for me too it's 6.20 in the morning I just parked at this uh, soccer field and I'm gonna head up north just to the northernmost point of Liechtenstein because I can't get there with a the car and from there on we're gonna walk about 40 kilometers south so let's begin the day it's 6 30 in the morning and the sun is just about to come up above these mountains from the Austrian side so to be here this early and start walking I had to get up at 3 30 and I went to bed at 12 so short night for me drove here for two hours which was very quick because the autobahn was empty and yeah just got here no problems not even a border control I thought there might be somebody in this little uh, border house controlling me nothing all empty just drove through so here I am in Liechtenstein walking nobody around so beautiful in the mornings so, as always at the northern part of Liechtenstein I'm crossing one way and coming uh, around the other way on the Rhine River Kaisertum Österreich Land vor Alberg Bezirkshauptmannschaft Feldkirch Gerichtsbezirk Feldkirch This is how our border post looks like from Austria and Liechtenstein We're just crossing shortly into Austria which is kind of funny because it's just a pedestrian and bicycle lane and then you have a sign Republik Österreich Vorarlberg very interesting just a little tiny bridge over this creek and we're just gonna go in kind of a little bit around follow up to the Rhine River to the northernmost point of Liechtenstein look at this beauty And here we are, the northernmost point of Liechtenstein. This here, just this border stone, along this one, kind of goes diagonally, and right there, another one, into the middle of the Rhine River. There is the tree point from Switzerland, Austria, and Liechtenstein, down here. As you see, it's easy to cross here borders in Europe like I showed you in uh, some previous videos but this one here is a little bit different from Austria to the Principality of Liechtenstein it says if you're crossing for uh, people walking and hiking you are allowed to cross if you have a travel document but not if you have to get a visa and if you're a foreigner no not carrying any goods you're allowed to cross from sunrise to sunset so actually Liechtenstein is not part of the European Union so there is still a border and customs if you're entering Liechtenstein they are in a customs union I think with Switzerland but between the European Union and Liechtenstein there is actually border guards and border posts so when you're entering this is why I was uh, kind of uh, surprised that this morning the border post was uh, completely empty nobody there no light just I know just drove through for the locals I think it's no problem anyways because they kind of can go between Switzerland Austria and uh, Liechtenstein but if you come as a foreigner normally they would control you maybe I, I was just too early but yeah Liechtenstein is not part of the European Union it's a uh, own country the good thing though is uh, it, it does use like the European roaming kind of uh, agreement so when you are 
here and you have a SIM card from the European Union, uh, you can use it for free in Liechtenstein. The only problem is that I'm walking here now along the Rhine River and this is Switzerland just across here, just the highway there and these mountains are already Switzerland and my SIM card just switches to the Swiss roaming network so kind of still gotta be careful anyways yeah that's it's easy entering Liechtenstein from the northernmost point continuing for about 40 kilometers to the south so even when you're walking you can tell where the border is because here on this side of the creek there is a blue red post and over there is a red white post same down there so you kind of see where the border is going and when you're in Liechtenstein and when you cross into Austria very interesting there's a lot of uh, canals around here up in the north everywhere bridges crossing this because uh, it's pretty flat so just for I guess that it's not a uh, Kind of swampy so it just uh, drains the whole area here beautiful landscape though and you have uh, nice roads to walk on here well there's an interesting site we're in the town of Rugel here in the northern part of Liechtenstein and in the basically in the village here in the central part there's a lighthouse here in the middle of the village it's kind of interesting because lighthouses you have uh, somewhere at the seaside and now that this thing is here I'm gonna tell you an interesting fact about uh, Liechtenstein it's one of two only double landlocked countries in the world because it's surrounded by two countries Liechtenstein's neighbors are Austria and Switzerland which are both landlocked countries so when you have countries surrounding you who are landlocked by themselves then you're twice landlocked the only other is Uzbekistan so it's an interesting fact about Liechtenstein here I see the flag from the country of Liechtenstein for the first time here in the roundabout in Rugel, just when you're entering from Switzerland. Here is the Rhine River, the bridge. So when you're coming from Switzerland, this is here to welcome you. Yes, welcome in Liechtenstein. Well guys, in uh, <clears throat> one of my last videos in Luxembourg, I said that Luxembourg is uh, the richest country in the world by GDP but it seems like Liechtenstein is even richer just because it's a too small country maybe they don't include it in the official rankings but Liechtenstein's GDP is hundred eighty thousand dollars per capita compared to Luxembourg of hundred forty thousand so there you go you have to be a country in Europe starting with an L and then there's the guarantee you are rich what a peaceful country this is it's amazing it's a Saturday morning I'm walking through Rugel southern part here through a residential neighborhood many houses around here you're only allowed to drive 30 here on this road through the village and there's nobody it's empty it's so peaceful there's no traffic it's nine in the morning there's no cars there's nothing the only thing you can hear is the highway from Switzerland what a place I don't know did I mention that Liechtenstein has only 40,000 people not even quite 39,000 something so let's say 40,000 people living in this country that's like so small you could fit all these people in the Allianz Arena from Bayern München in Munich 
and there would be still space for uh, for other visitors to watch the game that's so insane 40,000 people and it's an independent country and quite successful actually but what a place so beautiful so clean so nice well kept peaceful quiet and doesn't have a lot of visitors just because it's kind of I don't know many people come to Switzerland Austria Germany surrounding countries but Liechtenstein is kind of there's no airport you can land in Zurich I guess but it's still like off the path somehow so there's only 50,000 people a year visit here Liechtenstein is one of the most industrialized nations in the world with over 40% of its GDP coming from the industry I don't know how much the tourism plays a role because like I mentioned before there's not that many visitors here only 50,000 a year but farming is another sector and forestry you see a lot of farms still around here in these villages and then you have residential buildings in between the farms a lot of uh, new developing going on here in these uh, villages just some old farms and like up there brand new buildings everywhere popping up so I don't know if the population of uh, Liechtenstein is growing or they have a lot of immigration like compared to the size of the country so they need uh, new apartment buildings but like I say a lot of farms still around here it's quite rural it's very hot today and well I picked this day to go here because there is no rain there's no thunderstorm risk but it's a very very hot day today and when you're walking for 40 kilometers through the whole country you don't want thunderstorms for half the day or rain for half the day because then I wouldn't make it in one day so I chose to come here on this beautiful weekend hardly any clouds around nice blue sky and it's probably now almost I don't know 25 degrees and it's only 10 and it's gonna be like 33 34 later on today so it's gonna be very hot good I started very early though it's very interesting Liechtenstein such a small country but it has a railway I am in the biggest town of all of Liechtenstein it's called Shan and the station is called Shan Vaduz Vaduz is the capital city and Shan is just next to the capital city a little bit bigger slightly bigger 6,000 inhabitants and Vaduz something like 5,500 so almost similar in size and the train is even electrified the railway goes from Austria from here just crossing through Liechtenstein and right into Switzerland that's interesting there's uh, many bigger countries in Europe like Iceland they don't even have a rail network and then you have a such a small country and there's I think like three stations in Liechtenstein so you can travel to Switzerland from here just like probably get on the train and go to Zurich then or I don't know to Innsbruck Germany from here I'm not quite sure but it has a connection so I'm on the train station of Shan right there where the train arrives and this is the I guess the main mobility point center of the whole country here so people would get here by train from Switzerland Austria and then there's buses from here going all through the little country and to Switzerland and Austria so you can buy a ticket in Austria get on the bus get through Liechtenstein no problem or from Switzerland doesn't matter so you can reach any town point it does say on the back of the buses so you can go 
any point in Liechtenstein from this main hub here. Pretty amazing little country, but I'm pretty sure it's not for free like it was in Luxembourg. That one, I have to say, Luxembourg is way, way better than this place here. But it's a pretty cool place. Look at these colors. Very modern. And up there, like as if there was a child walking on the ceiling. It's pretty amazing. I like the colors. Everything so fresh and clean. Very nice. So this here is to the direction, like to the south of the country, Sargans is in Switzerland already. Many buses coming and going. Amazing. And what about clubbing in Liechtenstein? The Q club bar. I don't know, looks closed, but it would never come to my mind when you think about Liechtenstein, that it's a place for clubbing or like big parties but who knows maybe I don't know that much about the country maybe there's a lot of hidden bars clubs I noticed every town has a big casino so maybe who knows there is even a film festival here in Shan film fest now from the 7th to the 18th of August 24 so if you rather come to Shan instead of Berlin, Venice, Cannes, so just come to Shan. The city hall, pretty nice little town. And it's crazy when a town of 6,000 people is the biggest place in your country, right? In other countries, they're just a normal village. So I'm curious how much parking costs here in Liechtenstein because it's obviously a country with a really high standard like I mentioned before probably the highest GDP in the world and then you park here in the center of Shan one hour is for free and two hours 150 Swiss francs so which is whatever like one euro fifty two dollars that's pretty insane that you park one hour for free and then you have uh, then you have cities like Amsterdam where you pay like 10 euro an hour or even more. So this is pretty insane when you come to these uh, kind of small rich countries and then parking is so cheap even compared to Germany. It's quite insane. You pay even more in small towns in Croatia more than this here. But no matter how rich the country is, you always find something like this. Really old houses, all grown in, abandoned, some thorns, vegetation already growing around. You cannot even enter the house here. Pretty crazy. You would think that people here, everybody has so much money that every house would be spotless, right? But no, this one's abandoned. This one, I'm not quite sure. And then this one here, same thing. And it's literally just like two minutes from the city center of Shan. Used to be some kind of shop inside here, but must have been a long time ago, like back in the 70s, 80s, and then no need anymore. And this here might be the oldest house here in the town. That's actually quite amazing. Oh, 
Liechtenstein Olympic Committee. Well, which one? This one? <laughs> or this one here? That's quite interesting. You have the Olympic flags. It is actually the Olympic Games are being held right now in Paris as I'm here. And then you have this really old, who knows how many hundreds of years old house and the Olympic flag of Liechtenstein here. And officially entering the capital city of Liechtenstein. Welcome to Vaduz. Vaduz. I'm still not quite sure how you pronounce it properly. In German it would be Fadutz. So I guess it's Fadutz. So let's cross the capital city here from north to south, explore a little bit around. This is the main street, main road coming from north from Shan. There's some car dealers here, a lot of companies around on the sides of this main road, restaurants, businesses, yeah. So let's check out the capital city, one of the smallest capital cities of Europe. Here is the University of Liechtenstein. And the funny thing is that in the same building as the university is, there is a McDonald's. They even have a McDonald's here in Liechtenstein. I think it's the only one here in the capital city. Which is funny. A country of 40,000 people and a town of 5,000 people have a McDonald's. I wouldn't even have thought that the country would be big enough to support the McDonald's, but I guess it is. So, does your country have a McDonald's? How big is it? Because Bosnia used to have, I think, some four or five, but now not anymore because of some licensing problems. So there are some countries in Europe, they don't have a McDonald's, but Liechtenstein has one. I might go inside and grab a Coke, it's so hot already. Well, the only McDonald's in Liechtenstein. And I'm so thirsty, I have some warm water already in my backpack, but a cold Coke is much better. Ah. So, four francs 20. I know, around four euro for half a liter of Coke but it's refreshing and cold. That's what I need now to continue my walk. From here, I can see the castle of Faduz, just up there on the slopes. Let's go to the town center. From there, we might be able to see the castle even a little better. And then later on, I want to climb up there and then follow the ridge up there to the next town on top there. Because Liechtenstein is an Alpine country, so let's not just walk here in the lowlands. Let's hike up the mountain a little bit, see the castle and see something of the country from up there. I know it's gonna be tough because it's uh, very hot. It's noon now, but still, I can't come to Liechtenstein without climbing a little bit. So let's do it. From here, I can see the castle, the Vaduz castle for the first time. It's just up there. It was built, I think, in uh, 1100, something like this, so almost 1000 years old. It's from the ruling family here in Liechtenstein. So later on I want to go up there to the castle and kind of follow the ridge up on top there because Liechtenstein is an alpine country so I gotta do some climbing even if it's too hot but I gotta do it, not just stay here in the lowlands. 
there's a vineyard here. Well, I did not expect this here in Liechtenstein. Because the lowest point here is actually about like 450 meters where I started this morning. And then we're just going up and up and up. So, it seems like still somebody is trying or making wine. So, I don't know how this goes. I gotta Google if you can buy wine from Liechtenstein. So, it would be interesting. Here we are in the real fancy part of Baduz or the whole country. I guess this is where the rich people live, getting all fancy here, houses, buildings, hotel, there's even a wedding reception going on there. More vineyards here, the castle up there overlooking the capital city. Nice wall here with some nice rocks, brand new buildings, brand new neighborhood, so if you have a lot of money, a couple millions left, you could buy a whole apartment building or just one apartment for yourself if you want to come to Liechtenstein on vacation. What a place! Let's check out this cool place. Look at this here. Look at these colors. What do you think this could be? We're just approaching. The parliament of Liechtenstein. Looks beautiful. This is quite modern. This is a little bit more historical, but still very interesting combination. I like it. And there's some visitors here. They say there's not many people visiting Liechtenstein, but when you're here on this square, there's actually a lot of tourists. Some of them from Asia. We hear many languages. But I guess it could be busier because it's August. There could be many, many more people. So this is Liechtenstein, as busy as it gets on a Saturday in mid-August. This is the center of Faduz, where kind of everything is going on. All the restaurants, bars, terraces, shops. But like I say, it's such a peaceful country, walking through the suburbs, so quiet, and even the capital city on a whatever, nice sunny day in August, it's just kind of, feels so quiet. This here, it's a very interesting building, can't quite see it here from the side, maybe when we come a little bit on top but I don't know all the stuff hanging down here if it makes noise or sound when it's moving in the wind but very interesting very interesting almost up at the castle but the view from here is just amazing look at this I just passed by this building there, kind of through the forest here. And this morning I started at the furthest mountain all down there to Vaduz. I'm more than half through the country now. Here you can see the whole town of Vaduz almost. It's crazy when you can see half a country from one spot. at the iconic and most famous landmark in all of Liechtenstein, the Vaduz Castle, overlooking half of the country here. It's been here for almost 1,000 years. That's so crazy. Still the ruling family lives up here. 
I think you can't even visit inside. It's like a private housing, basically. So not a castle open for public. But coming up here and walking up here on this hot summer day is quite challenging probably for most people. I'm sweaty, but I don't mind. So I still have to go up further to the next town.